that, but the problem is, as we get older, the number of mitochondria in each cell just drops. And the ability, their, their function, ability to generate energy, it also drops as well. So the efficiency and the number in each cell drops like crazy. And of course, this has been tied clearly to this age-related vitality loss. Well, you know, we're in the 21st century and we have some amazing technology now. I want to show you something more exciting than just the textbook knowledge of mitochondria. Every cell in our body is teeming with these mitochondria. This isn't computer-generated design. This is an actual picture of a live cell where the mitochondria have been stained. Every cell has between 500 and 2,000 of these mitochondria. Just look at them moving around in the cell. Their sole purpose is to generate the energy that you need for all of the functions that Scott just described. And you can see also a zone there where they don't go. Okay, it's a, it's a round, remember this is three dimensions, so that's actually the nucleus of the cell. It's forbidden to all other subcellular particles except a special part, and Scott will talk about that in a minute. So, if you look inside that nucleus, what's, well, let me back up. As we look at the mitochondria, we're trying to understand why. Why is it that their functional ability and the number decline? To understand that, you need to understand what controls the mitochondria. And what controls the mitochondria is found in the center of the cell, that no man's land that Mark mentioned. And it's called the nucleus. So within the nucleus, you can see something called a chromosome. And those chromosomes, those contain the information that drives the cell. Now, if I spread out those chromosomes, you'll find that each of the genes are located within that, within that chromosome. Now, Mark, you have this fun little demonstration that right. helps better understand. So imagine this is your DNA. It's packed in the cell in these chromosomes, right? This is just the packing of the DNA. That's what you see right up there, Mark chromosome. As that unwinds, then basically what you see is the strand of DNA. Along the DNA, it's divided into compartments or sections called genes. So I'm not sure if you can see here, but I have a red gene and a blue gene. Can you see that? Each of those genes is the pattern, the code, for a particular protein. So the green gene is going to encode for a certain protein. Maybe it's for the cell wall of the mitochondria. So it's producing these proteins that end up as building blocks for the mitochondria. The red gene there, it's going to be producing a different protein. Maybe it's for some of the machinery that produces ATP, the little turbines there. The thing that really is at the heart of age lock science, gene expression science, is understanding how the levels of gene expression change during the aging process. Because it turns out that as you age, perhaps some of the red protein is not produced in sufficient quantities. Perhaps some of the green protein is produced too much. And the idea is to try to adjust that gene expression profile. So as we study those genes, what we were trying to find is those genes that are important to the mitochondria during the aging process. Now in every cell of our bodies, oh, there are over 25,000 genes. So the car will convert fuel, gasoline or diesel, and oxygen into power, right? If you have a young vehicle, one that's just driven off the lot, then it's actually going to produce that energy quite efficiently. It'll be quite powerful. It's not going to have pollution. It's going to produce sort of a clean exhaust. And so it's going to have really good fuel economy, right? Now, as the car gets older, if it's like mine, a 38-year-old Land Cruiser, it's not quite as efficient anymore. It starts to age. So it produces less power. And along with that, it's actually producing more emissions than the EPA would like. And so let's compare that then to the mitochondria. It's really the same story. Mitochondria converts fuel and oxygen to power, to energy. As they get old, they get less efficient at doing that. And to make matters worse, they're producing some toxic byproducts, which we know as free radicals, which actually accelerate the aging process further and further damage the, free, the actual mitochondria. So you can see this is an extremely important area to focus on in terms of our energy and vitality and our youth. Well, of course, it all stems from the nucleus. That nucleus contains 25,000 genes that controls every aspect of our bodies. 
But of course, they're not all responsible for what's happening to the mitochondria, right? So with our partnerships at LifeGen and our collaborations around the world with the leading anti-aging genetic experts, we've been able to identify that the mitochondria have 372 genes that change with age. But really, as we really narrowed it down and we looked at the most important, we were able to identify and target 52 of those genes, the genes that control the aging process of the mitochondria. So we used age lock science to first identify that, what we call a youth gene cluster, or these 52 genes, this group or cluster of genes that all work together to drive the aging mitochondria. We were able to find natural ingredients that are able to restore the expression level of those genes back to more youthful levels, which provided incredible benefits with all three dimensions of vitality. You can see up here, we've addressed the physical vigor, that mental activity, as well as that sexual desire. Let's try this out on some real living creatures. So we designed an experiment that Scott would like to share with you right now that really uh, surprised even us in oh. terms of its extent. Now this, this was just a fantastic, just a fascinating, this is what makes science so much fun for us. We were testing these new vitality ingredients on animals. Now of course we have to do that for safety purposes. Now we treat them just like you would your household pet. The animals aren't, aren't harmed in any way, they're housed in safe, clean facilities. They die of natural causes, we feed them healthy diets, and we observe. We just want to see what's happening to them. So we had this group of just normal diet of, of these mice. And we just watched them throughout their lifespan. Then we had another group of animals, these other, this other group of mice, who we fed the exact same diet, only we would add these, these ingredients that we identified using the age lock science approach. And it is important to note that they weren't fed these ingredients at birth, but basically they were healthy, basically young adult mice by now, equivalent to about 30 years of age before we then started to feed them an age lock ingredient. Now it's important to note, these are genetically identical animals. There's no difference. These are brothers. And at 30 years old, we started feeding. And we waited until they were an equivalent of 96 years old. You know, the, what you typically expect uh, of an aging human might be in an old folks home, very limited mobility. And what we saw was just so striking, we had to get our video camera and we had to record it for you. And what we saw was kind of scary. The control animals that had been just fed a normal healthy diet, at 96 years old, there was only one left. In the other group, who we had just did one change, added a single vitality ingredient, there were many animals still alive. But what was most striking is their energy levels. And let me just show you the video that we took of that. Now the mouse on the right was that one fed the age lock vitality ingredient. And it's representative of all the other mice that were in that same group. Now that one last mouse on the left, it looks like what you'd expect from a 96-year-old man or woman. Not a lot of energy, just sitting around, just moving a little. And as you look at that mouse on the right, it's so dramatic. As you see, compared to younger mice, the 30-year-old the mice that are in the same area, they look exactly the same. It was just so striking. Yep, and this is one of several that were alive at the time. And in fact, we took this video, I think about two months ago now. Almost three. This guy here is still alive. Isn't that amazing? That would make him about 125. Something like that. And he's not the only one in that group. So I hope we've been able to share with you today some of our excitement. You know, when we were tasked with the idea of helping to rejuvenate vitality, we thought, you know, that's a tall order but we actually were able to use gene expression science to target the source of aging. So we've gone into the body now, into the subcellular compartment and targeted the mitochondria, targeted gene expression that affects the mitochondria with age, screened ingredients that were able to reset those youth gene clusters to a more youthful pattern 
and then we're able to use that to guide our product development for age-lock vitality.